Graham Coughlin, a name that has become so familiar with Newport County fans as of recent, a man that can hopefully take the club to the next level. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what he has done so far as manager of Newport County and my overall opinions on the way we play under him. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well as given any feedback, it would be greatly appreciated. And with all that said, let's get this video underway. Coughlin, who was born in Dublin, Ireland, took the helm as manager in Newport County on October 20th, 2022, signing a two and a half year contract. He replaced manager James Robery, who had Newport sitting 18th in the league after 14 games played. The former Bristol Rovers and Mansfield head coach had most Newport fans over the moon. Due to his vast experience within this league previously, his passion for hard work and strive to have the team play football to the best of their ability also gave county fans, including myself, a lot of optimism for the rest of the season. In his first interview at the club, Cocker mentioned how he had always admired Newport due to their values matching his and saying that he was an honest and hard-working man that had rolled his sleeves up and stated that that's the way that Newport County had always been. He then went on to mention how excited he was to be back in senior management after spending 2021 with Sheffield United's under-23 teams. This gave him, however, a lot of experience within management and could potentially mean that he could solve his unfinished business, as he called it, in senior management after his previous stints with Bristol Rovers and Mansfield Town. Cochrane's first game in charge at Newport County was a 1-0 win at home to Colchester United on October 22nd, only two days after he originally took over as manager. This was a huge morale-boosting three points for the team, as before this, Newport were on a three-game losing streak in the league, last winning to league leaders Leighton Orient 2-1 away from home on the 1st of October. Coughlin was of course pleased with the result as he commented on the attacking chances that Newport had made and also commented on the solid defence performance in order for them to get the clean sheet but he knew not to get ahead of himself saying that they've still got lots and lots of work to do but he did say that he was overall pleased with the good solid performance. After this game had concluded Newport would go on to finish October with two away draws one being a nil-nil to the former club Cochrane had managed Mansfield Town and the other one being a 1-1 draw with promotion contenders Northampton Town. November started Cochrane's first full month in charge and it began with yet another win against Colchester, yet this time a 2-0 win in the FA Cup. The convincing and impressive performance took them through to the second round. Yet the first defeat of the Cochrane era did come only three short days later when Newport got knocked out of the Carabao Cup 3-0 by Leicester City at the King Power Stadium. Of course this result was expected, so it did not harm the job that Cochrane had done so far. However, the poor luck in the defeat in the Cup to Leicester did follow to the league, as four days later Cochrane lost his first game in the league as Newport manager, a 2-1 loss at home to Stockport County, where they came back from a 45th minute goal from Aaron Lewis. Seven days after this loss, however, Newport would pick up a 2-0 win against Gillingham. This game would give hopes that Cochrane would be able to turn around the form that the team was in. However, the month of November did end poorly for Cochrane's side as they were eliminated from both the Papa John's Trophy and the FA Cup in the same week as they lost 3-1 to MK Dons away from home in the EFL or Papa John's Trophy on Tuesday the 22nd of November and then Derby County 2-1 at Rodney Parade on the 27th of November. While it was disappointing that Newport were eliminated from all cup competitions for this season, it did give them a chance to focus on the league. The elimination from all the cup competitions for Newport did tend to give them some motivation in a vital 2-1 away win to crew to begin December. However, the rest of December would prove to be difficult for Cochrane's team as they lost 1-0 at home to Doncaster Rovers before two draws in the league, one being a 1-1 away draw to AFC Wimbledon and one being a 0-0 draw at home to league leaders Leighton Orient. The year had ended with Newport 17th in League 2, 9 points above the relegation zone. This had shown that so far progress was being made. January begun, of course this became the first transfer window for Cochrane at Newport County, but it did begin with a 2-2 draw at home to Crawley Town, with none other than Dom Telford scoring a brace. Yet this game gave an end to an error to two county players, as both Maddie Dolan and Robbie Wilmot left Newport to go to Hartlepool and Walsall respectively. With the two players playing over 400 games between the two of them for Newport County, questions were asked of what Cochrane was going to do in order to fill the gaps that had been made in midfield. 
Also in this window, Zimba, Lindley and Nevers all went back to their parent clubs as they were on loan at Newport. Cochran did state, however, that he was in no rush to sign anyone, saying that he had one or two players in mind, but if he would not sign anyone, he said that he would just get on with what he had. Of course, during all of this, the league did not stop, with Newport playing two more games in January, with one being a 1-1 draw at the Crown Royal Arena to Rochdale on the 7th of January, and a 2-0 loss away from home to Carlisle a week later on the 14th. There was due to be a game versus AFC Wimbledon at Rodney Parade on the 21st, Yet due to pits conditions and the poor weather conditions the night before, and the morning of the game, it had to be called off and rearranged. The lack of football of course pained all fans as they had no football to watch of course, yet it did give time for Cockburn and the Newport backing team to work on potential signings, and that they did come. The first January signing was Harry Charsley, who joined on a free, an 18 month contract from Port Vale on the 17th. The former Everton player had worked with Cotton before at Mansfield, and been a huge part in Port Vale's promotion to League One in the 21-22 season. This deal had been seen as huge by Newport fans, as not only had Charsley worked with Cockburn before, he had been described by Port Vale fans as a midfielder who was box to box, and creative, that of something that Newport were missing in the previous games leading up to this. With deadline day fast approaching, Newport fans were worrying that there was no more transfers to be made, as there were only rumours, and they were worrying that there was not enough depth to be taken into the rest of the season. Yet on the 27th of January, Newport would announce the signing of young defender Matt Baker from Stoke for the rest of the season. The centre-back had represented Wales at various youth levels before and would be seen as good competition and a player that could get into the starting lineup in future. Newport would sign two players on deadline day. The first signing made on deadline day was a player who was heavily linked and very welcomed by Newport fans, Manchester United forward Charlie McNeil. He had featured for Man United and Man City at their youth levels, as well as came on for a senior game for Man United in the Europa League against Real Sociedad. The striker had been seen as not only incredible depth, but he'd been seen as a player that could actually score loads of goals in this league. The second and final deadline day signing was, was 19 year old striker Callum Kavanagh. He had joined on loan until the end of the season from Middlesbrough. The Welsh born striker decided to represent the Republic of Ireland national team, where he's made appearances for the under 17s team on numerous occasions. The striker had been on loan with fellow League 2 club Harrogate Town, where he scored one goal in 12 appearances. While not much was known about him, Newport fans were, of course, delighted as they added an extra number to their squad to continue the season with. I will also mention, that a few of our youth prospects were loaned out, mainly to that in the Cymru Premier Division. However, these players, of course, were not playing for the first team, so they were not under Cochrane's plans, so I would not go into depth with them. February began the new leaf to Cochrane's side, and it started out with a 2-1 win at home to Swindon Town, in where Calvin Kavanagh actually scored on his debut. Following that was a 1-0 away win to Barrow, in where Mickey Dimitriou steps up and scores the winner on injury time. Following that was two draws, one being a 2-2 to at the time second place Stevenage, and then a 1-1 draw away from home to Walsall. Dimitri then stepped up again in a 1-0 win to Hartlepool, which was crucial in the relegation fight. The month of February unfortunately ended in a loss, with a 2-0 loss at home to Sutton United. March was a tough month for Newport County, and it started with a 3-1 away loss to that of Salford City, yet Harry Charsley did get his first goal for Newport in this game. March then continued with three consecutive 1-1 draws, one being an away 1-1 draw to Grimsby, and then two home draws, one being that to Bradford, and one being that to AFC Wimbledon. The Wimbledon game was the one rearranged, and in that game, Harry Charsley got the second goal for his Newport career. Yet the month of March did end very well in a 3-1 away win to that of Tranmere Rovers, where McNeil got his first goal for Newport and Kavanagh got a second onto his tally. April, the month we are currently in, started with a 0-0 draw away from home to Colchester United, and then a 3-0 win to that of Northampton Town at home, where McNeil scores a second goal for Newport and Bogle gets himself a brace. This win, however, seemed overshadowed, as only three days later, a 4-0 loss away from home to Stockport County really did crush Newport spirits. However, on the 15th of April, unknown to Newport fans at the time, a 2-0 win to that of Hartlepool at home would solidify Newport's place in League 2 for next season. A following 2-1 loss to Mansfield was where Newport were actually solidified in League 2 for next season, as losses lower down the table meant we stayed up. But of course, the 2-0 win was seen as the game for survival. So this game, while it was unfortunate to lose, 
especially for Cochrane to lose against his former side, it wasn't exactly seen as the hugest loss in the world. And then we lead to the most recent game, the 3-1 win away from home to Doncaster, which was a game where the first half we were poor and then the second half was absolutely brilliant. And there we have it, Newport sit on 53 points and 14th in the league, clear of relegation which is what the hopes were when Graham Cochran and Joe Dunn were appointed. Overall I think Cochran and Dunn have done an incredible job, they've given Newport an identity of play which we struggled to find at some points in this season, they've clearly worked the players really hard to get results and overall I'm pleased, I'm excited for the future, I think our January business has been utterly remarkable and I'd like to see those lone players potentially stay another year. But who knows? Let me know your thoughts on Graham Cochran and Joe Dunn and what they've done so far at Newport. And if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. And with that, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, evening or whatever. And yeah, take care.